last month when we saw this overthrow, the fall of Egypt, the thing that was, well, let me just read this to you. <coughs> the subtitle of the article goes like this. Water usage in North Africa and the Middle East is unsustainable and shortages are likely to lead to further instability unless governments take action to solve the impending crisis. Here's how the article starts. Poverty, repression, decades of injustice, and mass unemployment have all been cited as causes of the political convulsions in the Middle East and North Africa these last weeks. But a less recognized reason for the turmoil in Egypt, Tunisia, Algeria, Yemen, Jordan, and now Iran has been rising food prices directly linked to a growing regional, what does it say there, folks? Water crisis. How coincidence is that? The diverse states that make up the Arab world, stretching in the Atlantic coast to Iraq, have some of the world's greatest oil reserves, but this dis disguises the fact that they are mostly occupied hyper-arid places. Rivers are few, water demand is increasing as population grows, underground reserves are shrinking, and nearly all depend on imported staple foods that are now trading at record prices. Quote, now listen, this is from the EU, the European Union, which according to the scripture, that will be the superpower of the last day, a revised Roman Empire that scattered all over the eastern and western part of the Roman Empire. Listen to what the e European Union, their study is. The future of the main geopolitical resource in the Middle East will be water rather than oil. The situation is alarming. Now, we just read it a moment ago in Isaiah 19. Oh, but that's all prophecy. It's never going to take place. Listen, folks, it's taking place right before our eyes. Water shortages, concludes the Blue Peace report, are now so alarming that in a few years, opposing camps will have little choice but to cooperate and share resources or face ruinous conflict. Did that one take you by surprise? It probably would have took most of us unless we would have considered where's Egypt fit in all this. Now we'll go on, and I, I have to show you a couple other things. I, and I'm, not, I'm not boring you guys, am I? Huh? Y'all still with me? Um, you got to understand, I can't see real good, but so every once in a while, it'd be nice to have a, an amen in this Presbyterian church. Amen. Thank you, that good Presbyterian over there. In that day shall Egypt be like unto women, and it shall be afraid. Now watch, by the way, listen, this hasn't happened yet. Isaiah 90, go home and read it. It's starting to happen. Now we're down to verse 16. This is on into what's happening here is going to be afraid and fear because the shaking of the hand of the Lord of hosts and he shaketh over it. Remember one of the opening scriptures I gave you tonight? Once again, I'm not going to shake only the earth, but heaven and everything that can be shaken. And the reason why, because when it, it can be, it's, it's going to expose what can remain. And guess what? Egypt's getting shaken. The land of Judah shall be a terror unto Egypt. What, what, who's the land of Judah? Does anybody know who that is? Who's Judah, folks? Israel. Israel shall be a terror unto Egypt. Everyone that maketh mention thereof shall be afraid in himself because the counsel of the Lord of hosts, which he hath determined against it, and in that day shall five cities in the land of Egypt speak the land of Cana. Watch. And swear to the Lord of hosts. One, one what? One of those cities. One shall be called the city of destruction. What's that all about? I don't know. It doesn't look pretty though, does it? Apparently one of those cities are going to be somehow 
treated in such a way that when it's done, God says they're going to call it the city of annihilation, destruction. Now let me show you something that's interesting. It's worth your attention. Did you know that Israel is located in an area <clears throat> that they get constant threats all the time? So their defense has to be in tip-top shape. Literally within minutes, like eight minutes, they could be attacked at any point because of how close they are to their enemies. The Israeli army is the most skilled and advanced of any army in the world. And that's because they have the blessings of God upon them. Now, listen to me, folks. It is, Israel is constantly creating patents in the field of the military technology. And thank God, they regularly share their advanced intelligence and work in the military forces with the United States. Let me just tell you something. There's another area that is the threat. We know how serious... A lot, a lot of people are not talking about Syria right now, but Syria is a major player, and that'll be a whole nother message. It is a major player. Matter of fact, it is probably the major player in Bible prophecy against Israel, Syria. You don't hear anything about Syria right now, but I guarantee you will shortly. One of the things that's interesting about that is that there's a city in Syria. It's the oldest, long the longest existing city of all time. Why is that? You think that's just a coincidence? Of all the cities in the world, there's one city that has survived for thousands of years. One city, Damascus. Why is that important? Well, because God wants to make it really clear there's no mistake. Because in Isaiah, we read, chapter 17, verse 1, about the burden of Damascus, behold, Damascus is taken away from being a city. It shall be a ruinous heap. Let me ask you a question. You don't have to be super, super intelligent to figure this out. Has this ever happened? Huh? No. It's not taken away. It's a city right now. A thousand years ago, it was a city. 3,000 years ago, it was a city. 5,000 years ago, it was a city. Guess what? It is, this has never happened. But the Bible says it's going to happen. And when it says it's a ruinous heap, that's a future event. So what's going to happen that's going to cause Damascus to turn into a ruinous heap and maybe at the same time Egypt to have a city of destruction? Well, maybe we have a little insight from Zechariah who prophesied this 2,500 years ago. Now keep in mind, folks, when this was written, nobody had electricity. Nobody had any kind of tank or airplane. Nobody had technology that we are used to today. You'll see why I'm saying that in just a moment. This shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Now, there's two things I want you to notice that. Number one, notice that the word plague there, and you look this up in Hebrew, and it means the, this will be the defeat, this will be the slaughter. But notice who's behind it, that the Lord will smite the people. That come against who? Jerusalem. Watch closely. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand on their feet. Do you understand that 100 years ago, scientists mocked that? The Bible's stupid. What do you mean their, their flesh is going to consume away? The, the Hebrew word there is melt. Their eyes shall consume away, melt in their holes. In other words, the eyeballs are going to melt while they're standing up. Their skin will come off, their eyeballs will melt, and their tongue will melt in their mouth while they're standing up. Impossible. It was impossible. Until about 50 years ago. Because all of a sudden, a scientist who happens to be of Jewish descent, a Jew, Albert Einstein, started talking about what would happen if you would split an atom. And then all of a sudden we started getting into something that started terrorizing people.